Welcome to the Moving Forward with Hope podcast. I'm Lynn, your host. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about three uncommon benefits of being the family scapegoat. But first, let me share a way for you to get your voice heard and ways you can help support our channel. Bluehost is a web hosting platform that I use to build our website, and they have been fantastic to work with. At times, I've needed to call for support, to ask a question, and they have been fast to respond and provide assistance. If you were looking to build a website, I recommend Bluehost, as at the time of this episode, it's only $4.95 a month for web hosting, and I find they have better tools for SEO than some of their competitors. By clicking on the link in the description, you are helping to support our channel. Second, you can buy me a coffee. If you are benefiting from our content, please buy me a coffee so we can continue to bring you content that helps your situation. A link will also be in the show notes. Third, our Patreon account is getting set up as we speak. Be on the lookout for more information coming regarding this in the near future. Fourth, we are not only on YouTube, but we also have our videos posted on Rumble. If you are new to Rumble or haven't heard about it, it is fairly new and they have indicated it's a free speech platform. So at this time, we have made our content available on this platform. Be sure to check us out on Rumble. Now, let's start the show. Hi, I'm Lynn, narcissistic abuse recovery coach, author, and personal survivor of narcissistic abuse. At Moving Forward with Hope, we provide guidance to assist to validate your experiences in dealing with a narcissist, help to rebuild after the treacherous path, and move forward into your next journey. Validate, rebuild, revolutionize. I've been personally exposed to narcissists in my family upbringing as well as relationally. The fog was lifted for me in 2016, and since that time, I've made it a mission of mine to help others recover from the devastating and confusing life hurdles that occur. In a narcissistic family cult, uh, I mean unit, there are characters, just like in a movie set. Yes, actors that play a certain role for the duration of the movie. In a narcissistic family, the characters, namely the sons, daughters, parents, etc., play a role and that role is typically for life as long as they choose to remain enmeshed within the family unit. The actors within this dysfunctional family structure are the family scapegoat, the golden child, one or more narcissistic parents, and an enabler. There are additional roles, but today we're going to simplify these roles and discuss why the family scapegoat has benefits, uncommon benefits that is. First, let's do a quick definition of the family scapegoat within the narcissistic family environment. The scapegoat is typically the member of the family that takes the blame by the family for any negative issues undeservedly. The scapegoat did not, be, did not pick to be this role, nor can they do anything to change it. They are the ones known as the black sheep of the family. The scapegoat takes the heap of the family abuse on them and often grows up under this duress thinking it's normal until they observe other family structures and or have a wake up moment. The scapegoat is meant to feel responsible for the family affairs, feel guilt, carry the load of family shame and often neglected and are discarded in the meantime. The scope and ramifications are wide stretching and have lasting impact on the scapegoated child and which we'll discuss in another episode. The first thing I want to talk about today is that the uncommon benefit of being the family scapegoat is the scapegoat often has the courage 
to leave the family unit. Once the scapegoat learns that they have been scapegoated and are meant to be responsible for the negative issues of the family and to carry the load and burden thereof, they are the party that is most likely to not only create an exit plan, but they oftentimes manage to escape the family unit entirely. The scapegoat has the best chance of survival by managing to leave this destructive family unit. Now, the escape is not easy. It is often burdensome and difficult to leave the family unit, and this is where their courage comes into play. When the scapegoat leaves the family unit, not only will there be an attack, which is called a smear campaign, on the scapegoat, but the entire family must reshift. The scapegoat views leaving the narcissistic abusive family as necessary for survival once they realize the big scale, the large impact of remaining. The scapegoat gets the courage to leave, knowing there may be ramifications if they stay and if they go. If any party of the dysfunctional narcissistic family unit is going to disembark, is going to be the scapegoat. Once the scapegoat comes up with a well-formulated plan after having their eyes opened and they can see the abuse, they make the move with courage they may not have known before and set off to take a new path in life apart from being the scapegoated individual. The scapegoat sits off on a healing and recovery path and forms new relationships and changes the trajectory of their life. Now I want to pause right here that if you are in a relationship with a narcissistic abuser, please take precaution as the risk is high upon the immediate exit of the relationship. Please contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. This is the USA number 1-800-799-SAFE if you're in immediate danger. Second, the scapegoat leaves the path of destruction behind them. The scapegoat sees through the BS. They see the deception, the lies, the love bombing, the devaluing, and they choose to have no part in it. Many scapegoats have chosen to institute a no contact policy, even with their family. No contact is a big decision and should not be taken lightly. No contact is to literally have no further contact with the narcissistic abuser or abusive family unit. It's to draw the line in the sand and to say no more. The scapegoat goes off to start a new life. The scapegoat's now in charge and is not a victim of their circumstances. They have taken the front seat to live a different life and no longer serve in the role as scapegoat. They do the inner work to heal. The scapegoat, even though they have been stated that they suffer from low self-esteem and low self-worth by being the brunt of the family for years or decades, finds not only the courage to leave the family unit, but many times are the ones to become vocal about the abuse that has occurred. They seek the emotional help and support they need to recover and get well. Now, the scapegoat has the highest probability of seeing through the BS and has evaluated the consequences of leaving the dysfunctional family unit and takes the calculated risk. The scapegoat is the party within the family unit that has that greatest chance of seeing through the charade. Third uncommon benefit of being the scapegoat is they become healers. Scapegoats, since they have been there, often help others to be aware of narcissistic abuse within a dysfunctional family structure and help others to recover. Scapegoats typically are empathetic 
and can empathize with others easily. Many scapegoats, after they've gone through a healing and recovery journey, choose to be a resource for those who were victims of narcissistic abuse. This is Lynn. This has been the Moving Forward with Hope podcast. Check out our website, movingforwardafterabuse.com. And I will see you in the next episode.